Without further ado, we're going to jump straight into uh, James, who is going to give us uh, a quick tour of AppMaker. So over to you, James. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Martin. So um, I guess uh, you know, let me, I'm really excited about AppMaker. So after working on AppScript for many, 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 many years, um, well, since beginning with Roman, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, you know, the AppMaker is, uh, is it, what's being called a rapid application development uh, or rad um, de environment. And what it does is it, it just allows you to build apps really fast. It's very low code, which, but it is built on top of AppScript. So uh, it does run from script.google.com when you publish UIs. And, and the idea behind it is to make UIs. And so I just wanted to take in, and let me just uh, do the, the screen share here, and I'll take you to a couple of different places, and then we're going to actually build an app in about 10 minutes, a completely data dri database-driven application from start to finish um, in less than 10 minutes. So um, that should be really, really pretty awesome. Let me uh, switch over. So uh, this is a just uh, just so I could do a quick test here on the screencast. So you guys can see this G Suite page here. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so this is where you want to go to sign up right now. AppMaker is in EAP, and so you would come here. It's uh, gsuite.google.com forward slash AppMaker. We'll get you here, and what you want to do is you want to fill out this form here, and that's not the form to get into the EAP, but it will give you a welcome email, and then in that welcome email, there's another link that you click that's going to take you eventually to a Google form, and that Google form is what you want to fill out. Uh, and a couple of things to note is that AppMaker is only available for G Suite for Business, so what we used to call Unlimited. Uh, so your domain does have to be uh, a business domain in order to get into the EAP. Um, and then the, the checkbox is on the, I think they want to see a little bit of JavaScript experience and some stuff like that. So if you've been doing any kind of coding in, in, uh, in Google Script, then you want to you want to be able to Put, make the checkboxes. I don't know what the magic combination is on the checkbox to get you in right away, but from, from my conversation with Google yesterday, they said they have about 2,000 people that have signed up, and so they're going through and vetting all those domains, and so that the, the wait is a little bit lengthy at this point, uh, just because of the initial uh, amount of people that signed up. Uh, part of what we're doing with uh, partnering with Google on this is we've created a website called AppMaker University, uh, it's admakeruniversity.com, and uh, what we're doing is training videos so that uh, we can help everybody get up to speed on what's going on with AppMaker, and um, we'll be trying to produce a video a week, and we have a new one coming out here in a couple weeks called Boot Camp that's really kind of uh, takes you through all the steps of creating an app. So, so without further ado, let's jump right into AppMaker, um, and uh, this is actually the UI for the editor, uh, and We'll, uh, we're going to create a, a, this is a brand new app. It has nothing in it yet. The only thing you're looking at right now is just a blank canvas uh, for a web page. And so, uh, you know, the first thing we want to do in, a, in any kind of database driven application is, of course, make a database. And so AppMaker makes that really easy. It has uh, a new feature, and, and I don't know how this is going to play out. It's called Google Drive Tables, and I don't know if they're going to allow access from AppScript into this or even be able to see these drive tables in Google Drive, but they are indeed hosted uh, within Google Drive. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, the only way to access them is through um, AppMaker at this point. So we just click on uh, Next, and we'll just call this uh, Places. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little app that helps us kind of keep track of some of the places we've been and, and the different things we like about them and that kind of thing. So uh, that's simple. We just built a, a database, uh, adding a field. Uh, we just specify what kind of field we want. We'll call this one location. Um, and if anybody has any questions, just kind of pipe up as I'm going through these really quickly. Um, we're going to do another one with number, and we'll call that rating. Uh, and one thing that's really neat is when you tab through here, it, 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 it with the with the name of the field, it automatically does some capitalization and things like that on the display name to kind of make it a little easier for you, uh, which is great. Um, let's see, we'll do a boolean value here, and we'll say uh, is visited, and then a date. I just want to give you guys a kind of a, a whole gamut of the different things that you might be using as far as fields are concerned. And it's really this easy just to be creating your database and going along 
Um, let's do one more number and we'll call that one cost. And then um, let's do a string. We'll call this one experience. And for this one, we want to do something special. Let's add um, let's add some possible values. So we'll just say good. Oops. I guess I hit enter a little too soon there. Good. Average and bad. Okay. That's it. So we've uh, we put put a bunch of fields into our database. We've defined a few things. Uh, we've got basically several different types of fields that we're using. Uh, and so what we want to do now is let's click over these the pages section or our pages in our app. Uh, and so we'll call this one. Uh, let's call this one add place. And you notice. That over here on this side here on the on the right hand side we have this thing called the properties editor. So anything that's selected in the screen will be uh, over here. You'll be able to see its properties and be able to adjust it uh, from there. And so the first thing we want to do is add something to this page. Uh, actually, the we want to link the page first to the the data source over here, which is the places database that we just created. Now, the really th cool thing about AppMaker is it also can bring in SQL databases. So if you already have existing databases, you can link to those as well and actually create fields, uh, create new tables, uh, do everything you would do or you expect to do right from AppMaker without having to go to another tool like SQL Pro or something like that uh, to, to control your databases. So that's, that's really a great feature. Um, we have a video on how to set that up. So this little icon up here opens the widgets panel, and most of AppMaker is drag and drop. And so what we have is we have a whole series of, of widgets here that we can just drag right onto the page here. Uh, and and we can just, we'll just drop it out here um, in the middle. And because we dropped it on top of the page, and you can see it's going to inherit this place's data source. And we'll do, we'll do an edit form so we get all the different features that you can have on a form. And we just click Next. And this screen here allows us to either uh, have all the fields or, or different fields, things like that. Um, if we want to uh, move a field to a different spot on the form before it's created, then we can just drag and drop them. So that's really handy. Uh, we just click Finish. And that's going to create our form for us. So a couple things. Uh, one, it, we dropped it on the page. And, and I'd like it to be kind of up there in the upper part of the page. So we can go down here to layout and just very precisely uh, place that. Um, it gave us a header. Uh, so we can we can just uh, we can work with that. I mean, it gave us a description here that we can also do some things with. So let's see, add, edit. Okay. Uh, it automatically created the fields in our database because those are the ones we selected. So we've got the location one, we've got the rating one, we visited, and because this was a boolean, it has it actually created a checkbox for us because it knew it was a boolean. Uh, cost experience is a drop down because we had put in those good, bad, and average. So it it automatically creates that, and then date, of course, is a date field. So let's just take a quick look at that. And so the first time, the very first time you do a preview. Uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to load up because it's got to create a new app script uh, to for all of the information from AppMaker, and it's also going to have to go through a few things like asking for permissions and and all those different pieces. So it does take a little bit more time. And like I said, this was the very first time we created an app. It's, we're starting right from scratch, so you do get a few things. Uh, these typical grant access screens that you're used to seeing in app script uh, haven't really changed. And note the URL up here. So we're we're at script.google.com, and so it's 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 running as a as a regular um, uh, UI app. So we click the create button, and we get to add a location. So we'll say uh, New York. Let's do the abbreviation for New York. Uh, let's give it a rating of three, and we'll say we visited there. Cost is one thousand. 33. Um, the experience was average. And the date was, I'm just go back and grab the date picker. And that's, so there you go, working form. Let's create one more. Uh, I'll say 
Mountain View CA, um, rating five, visited, yes, cost 500, 44, and good, and then a date. So here's, um, here's our controls down here to navigate through our records. So you can see we're, we're able to navigate those records in the database and trash can, all that kind of good stuff. So I, there, there's just the basics of the app. Not very spectacular, um, but it, it, did, uh, it, it does, does look pretty good. A couple things I want to do here is I want to create this as a pop-up form in our app because it, you know, right now it's just a, just a page, but I'd rather have it as a pop-up form. So I'm going to put a button out here. Uh, I'm going to say icon. And what's really neat about AppMaker is it uses the material icons, which you can get from um, material.io forward slash icons um, and to, to do its, its different little pieces. So let's, let's change. And we, what we do is we just change the, um, change the text on the button. And now we get an X instead of the word close, which is really cool. Um, to add an action to that button, we just do this on click. And we're going to say close dialogue. It's really that easy to add that. So the one last thing I want to do here is I just want to size the page because I do want this to be a pop-up in the center of the screen. So I need the page size to match the size of the widget. So I just drag my handles. Get rid of that. Just guys, if I can get it to move. Come on. Um, drag my handles to just size it to the size of the widget there. OK, so that's that. Let's do now a new page. We just select page. I'm not going to get into the page fragments today, but there are ways to add menus that you can just add as a widget. So you can create an entire page as a widget and then put it onto other pages. And then it becomes like a template, uh, which is really great. Uh, so I'll call this one places. And let's add a quick label out here. Uh, the, the thing that we really like to see about AppMaker is just you know, how easy it is to do all this stuff. So in this label, I'll just double click this one. Instead of going to the property editor, I can just double click the item and start typing into the text field. Um, we'll call this our faces app. And to style things in AppMaker, we've got a couple different ways. But one of them is this variant menu up here that you saw me use on that button. And it allows us to just scale through uh, the different different sizes that we might have. We'll just choose that one. That one looks good. Um, and one other thing I'd like to do here is I want to add a little bit more flair to it. So uh, we can put another label out here beside this one here. And for this one, let's call it map. And I'll just change that to an icon. And that gives us the map icon. But it's a little tiny right now. So one thing, that, the way we actually get really into to styling objects in AppMaker is we use the CSS uh, style editor over here. And it allows us to just type regular CSS, uh, like you would use in any web page, uh, right into the UI. So one of the quick ways is if you have something already uh, selected that you want to style, you just hold down your control key and hit spacebar. After you click there. And it, the very first item will be the item that is selected. And so you can just hit that right there. Uh, it does have all the predicting t predictive texting stuff that you would expect to uh, get. So we can do font size. And this, again, I'm just hitting control spacebar. Um, and we'll say, let's see, 75 px. And we'll add um, some padding. The top so that it just comes down a little bit. Let's say that's 25 px, and let's just change its color to blue. Okay, and you see we have just a little bit of a sizing issue here, so let's just go and we'll move right over here to the the width, and we'll set it at 100, and we'll set the height at also. 100. And so now we have a nice little map icon for our app, which is great. Um, we'll turn the page. I just clicked on the page, and we want to turn that to paper so it's nice and white, and that looks a little prettier. Uh, and now we'll add an element that allows us to do some CR data. So I'm dragging out a table element, throwing it on the page there. 
I do want to be able to edit the items in the table itself. So for each item in the row, I would want to be able to edit that. Let's click on Finish. And it creates a table for us uh, automatically on the screen there, which is really kind of cool. Uh, I do want to change a few things around here, though, because I don't want to have just, uh, just a uh, kind of a, a plain uh, thing that I just had in the form. So one of the things we do want to do is we want to be able to open that uh, form that we just made that you saw a few minutes ago. So I'll drag a button out onto the screen here. I'm going to change that to icon and I'm going to set this text to edit. 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 Oops, lower James. Uh, with an on-click handler. And what we want to do there is we want to just say open dialog and we'll the add places dialog. So there's our our edit button. Um, the cost here. Uh, is just a, a standard number, and, and often we want to see or we want to show um, that it's not just a number, uh, it's, it's a dollar amount. And so we don't want the data in the database to be, have a dollar sign in front of it, because then it's going to be a string, and we can't really do math with that without converting and doing a whole bunch of things. So what AppMaker does is allows us to do these things called transformers. And so we can choose a transformer for the different object type, and for this one, we'll just choose uh, this one with the pound sign and cents, and because I want a dollar sign in front of it, I'll just actually click right in there and add a dollar sign. So that'll format um, our, our um, cost. Dates also have a way of formatting, so if, if, you're, if you're happier with a different kind of date, we can select that right from there. And the rating here is, if you remember, we were choosing from a drop down or from a numbers, just typing in a number, one, two, three, four, that kind of thing. Uh, and that's okay, but it's kind of boring. So let's just delete that object and um, let's add in one of these star ratings, which is really cool. Uh, kind of a neat, neat little piece. And I'll have to make a little bit more room on our UI for this, obviously. So the, when you add an item onto the screen there, you just have to click in its value and choose what kind of a value that is. Um, we'll click in the binding and we'll say rating. And now that's bound to it. And it has a few other features and I cover that in another video as well. So it uh, looks like we could go a little bit wider here uh, with our sizing. So let's just make our table just a little bit wider. And one of the things that's really great here is you can just hold down your shift key and just drag and select a bunch of items at once. And then we can just move them over to the side to give us just a little bit more room. So uh, that was quite a bit of formatting and stuff. There's one more thing I want to add, but just to uh, try this out, let's go ahead and click on the preview button and we'll see how, how these different features work and look in the app. Uh, one of the things I found is, and, and something you might have noticed, is we, we really have, well, we wrote a little bit of CSS, but we haven't written any code yet. <laughs> you know, and, and actually, we aren't going to write any code in this, in this preview. Um, now, the, the one place that, that I haven't shown yet, but there is, you can create client-side scripts and server-side scripts, uh, and those are in just your, what you would expect in App Script. Um, and, and I also want to note that this is the preview when you, window, so it does give you the error console at the bottom, and it gives you a way to navigate your different pages up at the top. Um, so uh, we do have our star rating now, and you can see it's working. Uh, if we uh, change the stars, they just automatically check, and we can uncheck and uncheck our boxes. Uh, so this form is, is actually active. Um, if we wanted to uh, uh, change our, our ratings and that sort of thing. And you can see our dollar signs are now showing up and formatting as currency for that. Uh, if we click our button, let's see, we get our form, and it does a nice uh, model. And you can see it's the record that we were selecting, so it automatically gets that selected for us. Everything in AppMaker is data bound. So if you kind of look over here behind in, in, in the model at the Mountain View, if I check this box here, it's automatically updates it's bound to the database so that's a live update there's no save buttons or anything like that it just it's just all data bound uh, so that's really kind of cool uh, the last thing I'd like to do is just kind of polish off our app because it's already pretty impressive now that you know in just a few minutes we've built this uh, one more thing I'd like to add to it is an actual map 
So um, I want to go ahead and create a page for that so I can pop it up in the center of the screen. And so we'll, we'll, we'll add a page here. We'll go down here and we'll set its data source to places. And um, let's open the widget panel here and we'll scroll down here and Google gives us this really great little uh, Google map widget here. So you can just drag that up. Um, I'm gonna place it right up there. I don't think I got quite at zero, so let's make sure we do. And we'll make it bigger so that it sticks out in the center. Uh, and because we're gonna create this as a dialogue, we're gonna wanna have a close button again. So we just grab a button, throw it up here on the screen, um, click on an icon, go to close, and set it to close dialogue. Position it right there, and that looks like a pretty nice map. We're going to, again, make the page just the size so we get that nice modal effect in the middle. And boom. OK, there's that. The last thing we want to do here is we want to set um, the, we want to click on the map. I got a little bit of extra gray in there. Kind of like my hair. Um, we want to set the the address of this map to the uh, to the binding of the location that we have in our database, and that way it, it, that, that's how it knows what to key off of. Uh, so that's what we needed there. Uh, we just bounce back over to our places table, and we'll throw another button out there to open our map, and this one we'll call place. select the icon, and there's that, just as simple as that. Drop it right there, on click, and we'll do open dialog, and well, I guess I called it new page, which is fine. That's the page, I didn't rename the page there, but we'll just, we'll just leave it a new page. And we'll just click on that and give her a go. So we'll see if I forgot any steps along the way. <laughs> This is you know, actually unscripted. It's just as I've been doing it all day long for days and days. Uh, so now we have our different uh, uh, places here. Let's just click on the map and let's see. Oh, yep, that looks like Mountain View. Uh, we close that and we reopen that one and there's New York. So now we have map integration into our, our places. So that's AppMaker. That's just a quick, quick review. I don't know how many minutes that was, but we, uh, we did accomplish creating a pretty neat app in a pretty short amount of time. So I'm trying to figure out how to get my screen sharing shut off. <laughs> so, yeah, so, and um, and uh, I, I've been fortunate to see a bit, a bit further beyond that. And I know that you've just, just got the you know, tip of the iceberg there in terms of stuff. You, you Absolutely. Know, <laughs> as, you, as you mentioned, there's the whole actual, you know, you can still do app script server client uh, scripting yourself. So you, you know, on top of the lovely interfaces and, um, you know, the ease of creating stuff quite quickly, well, very quickly, uh, there is the power of app script under the hood as well. Yeah, definitely. I, it, and really what it's done for us is because we do a lot of UI work. We, we do a whole lot of UI work for our clients. And, you know, there's still a lot of back-end stuff that you have to do. We have to connect to Gmail. We have to connect to documents and all those things. And all that stuff is still written in App Script. And you just create a script and, and just add those functions to the front-end piece. But it, it's basically made it to where we don't have to deal with front-end UI stuff at all. You know, other than just drag and drop and wire it up, and that's that's pretty amazing. So you get all the power of App Script and all the things that it can do with a really really easy way to build the UIs. So we've got a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, um, if someone just wants to unmute and um, ask James a question, you're more than welcome. Yes, I have a question. Uh, how about collaboration? So you went in there. Can you collaborate? Again, if there is collaboration, is it real time? Absolutely. Uh, well, okay, so it is real time in the respect that it's more like real time like spreadsheets. So if you drag a widget out onto the seat, so you share the project like you would anything in, in, in Drive, and uh, somebody else, everybody has to be within the same domain, 
So that's uh, that's one important thing to remember with with App Maker is right now it's restricted to within your domain, and there's no uh, currently because it's being sell, sold as having to have a, a G Suite business class. It's going to stay that way for a while, I think. The first thing I said, like like in the first five minutes of the, of the first class I took on this with Google, was, well, are we going to be able to release this to the public? Because I know businesses are going to want to make UIs that their customers can use, and they're like, no. <laughs> so, so we're hoping that maybe we'll be able to push that and get it to where we can just create UIs for anybody. But right now, it's just within your domain. So the sharing is the same way, and it's drag and drop. So if you drag something onto the screen, uh, once you drop it, everyone else will see it. If you click it and edit it, you'll see your edits, and then when you hit uh, hit enter, then those edits will show up for everybody. So it is it is collaborative. So uh, very that, nice, thank uh, you. Yeah, it's great. Good question, Steve. We got um, some time. Is, is someone else? Okay. I have one more, one question here. Has within your domain is this going to be uh, compatible with the new sites embed URL feature? So um, not it's not there yet because you can't embed any. Well, the the best way to do this is to use Awesome Table. Uh, uh, Rome could probably um, do a little bit more of that, and I have done that um, just to test it out. So it does work. Um, the problem is right now the new sites doesn't unless something changed in the last couple of days. Um, the new sites doesn't have a way to insert an app script. Um, but when it does, if it, if it does, I guess I should say, um, you can insert. It. Like any app script we've been doing in, 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 in Google Sites for, for a long time. So um, it's because it's the same thing. It's it's running off of script.google.com. It is the app script you have. So, yeah. All right, thanks. I think we've got time for one more question if anyone else is. Yeah, one more question. The App Maker University, is that built on App Maker? Uh, it it looks a lot like it would be, but unfortunately, no, <laughs> because <laughs> if you can't make it. If I had the opportunity, I would. Um, but no, it's actually uh, Angular two uh, running on Firebase. So <laughs> it's it's funny, James. You always get asked that question. I, I know. <laughs> You're just gonna have to start lying. But you say I can't tell yeah. you how we did it. <laughs> special special. <laughs> Where I can I can publish publicly. Yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't. Well, it looks, uh, thanks, James, for that. Um, uh, as we said, very tip of the iceberg look at at, at Maker. Um, um, I'm, I'm sure that there's going to be lots of interesting stuff that people can do. That um, and uh, anything where you're spending less time on UI. Can only be a good thing in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it does simplify a lot of things, and and yeah, like you say, it is very much the tip of the iceberg. There, are, it, it gets much, much, much deeper. And we'll, and like I said, we'll, we're going to try to be bringing out a video a week, so, so, uh, so we'll be covering all those deep topics.